How to photograph an annual solar eclipse step by step. Hello, photo pillar, Rafael the Bar here. In this video, you'll learn how to photograph the coming June 10th, 2021 annual solar eclipse or any other solar eclipse you wish to photograph in the future. So, get ready to learn how to photograph all the phases of the eclipse, including the partial eclipse and the earliest amazing phase of totality, the ring of fire. And also, get ready to learn how to photograph the eclipse aligned with an interesting subject or with a powerful landscape. Are you ready? Because, as always, everything begins with the plan. As you know, the solar eclipse won't be visible everywhere. It will be visible only in certain locations on the planet. So, the first thing you need to do is to figure out where on Earth the eclipse will be visible and at what time each phase of the eclipse will occur. With all this information, you'll be able to plan your annual solar eclipse shot, like I did. Actually, I planned a really cool shot of the partial phase of the eclipse in New York with the Empire State Building. So, my idea is to photograph the partial eclipse aligned with the top roof of the Empire State Building. So cool! I have my shooting spot, the red pin position, and my shooting date, uh, June the 10th, the date of the eclipse, and my shooting time, 6 a.m. If you wish to see me planning this shot, if you wish to learn how to plan this annual solar eclipse or any other solar eclipse in the future, watch this video. Whether your goal is to photograph only the faces of the clips with no foreground, or to photograph the clips aligned with an interesting subject, truth is that you'll need the same equipment. You'll need your tripod and head, your camera of course, and a telephoto lens, 300, 400, 500 or more. The longer the better. And if you have a crop sensor camera, you'll benefit of the multiplying effect on the focal length. Also, you have a teleconverter, it may be a great idea to use it to get a longer focal length. If your goal is to photograph a landscape with the path of the eclipse, then you'll need a wide-angle lens. At the end of the day, the lens choice depends on the framing you want, depends on the photo you want. Also, you don't want to risk damaging your camera, or even worse, damaging your eyes when you're looking through the viewfinder of your camera, then don't use an ND filter to photograph the eclipse. Use a solar filter and a good pair of solar eclipse glasses. Finally, use an external shutter release or an interferometer, because the less you touch the camera, the better. You want to avoid vibrations at all costs, because vibrations produce blurry images. On the eclipse date, arrive at the location at least one hour or more before the eclipse begins, or even more in advance if you can. In 2017, for the total solar eclipse, we arrived at the shooting location one day before to avoid all the traffic jams on the date of the eclipse. When ready, set up everything at the planned shooting spot. Remember, the red pin position. And make sure that everything is stable. You can use photo pills or mental reality to visualize the path of the eclipse and the position of the eclipse at all time. So you make sure that you are at the right shooting spot. Now, set the focal length you wish to use to get the photo you want, the framing you want. For example, 500mm. And attach the solar filter to the lens. This is important. Keep the solar filter in front of the lens during the whole eclipse. Do not take it off during totality. Remember that during an annual solar eclipse, the moon never covers completely the sun. So keep the solar eclipse filter in front of the lens all the time. If you're shooting with a telephoto lens, Meet a light on the surface of the sun before the eclipse begins. Now set the aperture to f8 to get a nice type of fill. Set the nominal ISO of your camera, for example 100 ISO. And set the shutter speed that gives you a photo correctly exposed of the sun. Usually a shutter speed between 1 divided 500 and 1 divided 1000 seconds should work. Use it as your base shutter speed and then bracket, bracket, bracket. A one stop bracketing of three photos will be enough in most situations. Now make focus on the age of the sun. And if you're photographing the clips aligned with an interesting subject, may focus on your subject. Take a test shot and check that the sun or the sun and your subject are in focus. There is an easy way to figure out the camera settings you need to use to make sure that you're getting in focus both the clips, the sun and your subject. If you want to learn how to do it, watch this video. And last but not least, check that the exposure is right. And you're ready for the clips. Just enjoy the show. No, top. Dos. Show me the clips, Tony. Uh, uh, show me the photo. Uh, start!
The Clint, oh my god! Wow, start! Yes! Come on! Now, if you wish to learn more on how to photograph the solar eclipse, I invite you to download our super detailed solar eclipse photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and also in the first comment below. Download it! Also, if you wish to learn how to photograph the moon in many, many situations, I invite you to watch our moon photography course. You have it here. It's free. Watch it. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye!